<clears throat> we are going to be talking about prepositional phrases today. You learned prepositions a very long time ago down in lower school, and you learned prepositional phrases probably in fourth or fifth grade. So this should be review primarily, but it's good to review. So we're just going to look over these, and then you'll include them in your current work. First, we need to go over what a preposition is. So I'd like you to meet my buddy. This is Preppy. See my little frog guy? So Preppy, we're going to look at where his position is. Really handy way to remember what a preposition does. It tells you where things are in relation to other things. We'll get into that more in a second. But for instance, we could have Preppy under the bush. He could be behind the tree. He could be on the swing. He could be, um, let's see behind the slide. He could go around the playground. He could play with the ball, right? So anything that shows a relationship in space or time. So in theory, like, he could come after the puppy dog in line. Anything like that is a preposition. And there are oodles of them. Take a look at this list. This is a relatively exhausting list. We probably did miss a few. But you know, there are lots and lots and lots of prepositions. Some of them talk about location, so things like behind, beneath, below, words like that. But some are more about time or other things. So um, let's see, where's a good one? After. Before. Okay. So keep in mind, anything that shows a relationship is really a preposition. Its whole purpose is to show how two things in space or time, etc., are related. So a prepositional phrase is, of course, using a preposition. Um, it has a few things. First of all, it is a phrase. If it's a phrase, that means it's not a clause. A phrase does not have a subject and a predicate. Keep that in your mind. Um, a prepositional phrase always has an object. Remember learning about the object of the preposition last year? We went over that in seventh grade. So there's always an object involved. It always begins with a preposition. That's kind of important. Otherwise, it's not really a prepositional phrase. Um, it shows a relationship in time and space, and it can be single, connected, or multiple. So we say single, there can be one prepositional phrase. If it's connected, it can be two or more. So if I'm talking at the beginning of a sentence, I say, um, in the middle of the night. That's two different prepositional phrases. I don't put a comma in between them. They're stuck together. They work together, right? Um, so it's a series, but they're connected. Or I can have multiple prepositional phrases. And the, that's two or more that are separated by commas. So it might be something along the lines of um, when you're almost like a list, right? So at the unbelievable luxury, at the beds with their feather mattresses. So both of those prepositional phrases start with the same preposition. They're not really stuck together. It's more like two separate obs observances, right? So have that in mind. Those are different things. They have different kinds of punctuation, which is part of why it's important to know the difference. Prepositional phrases also have different jobs. So a prepositional phrase can act like an adjective. And if it's going to be an adjective, it's going to answer the question, which one? Which is kind of a big deal, right? So you know what it is the prepositions can do. At the same time, they can also act as adverbs and tell you how, when, or where. So looking at a single prepositional phrase. From Little House on the Prairie, on the whole enormous prairie, there was no sign that any other human being had ever been there. So if I'm looking for my preposition first, here it is. Now, remember, you're taking notes. Part of your grade for this assignment is whether you're going through taking the notes, so make sure you're following along. So on is my preposition. It shows a relationship of location, right? Its object is the whole enormous prairie. So this all together... Right? On is referring, what is it on? It's on the whole enormous prairie. That is the prepositional phrase with the preposition and the object. Specifically the object of the preposition, of course. 
Then we have a connected prepositional phrases. So, upon the grass, what well, was it upon? It was upon the grass of, another preposition, the great plains, the crooked bare thorn trees were scattered. That's from out of Africa. So you have two different prepositional phrases here, but they're working together. So you'll find that since there are two, we have a comma right here. When I start with one, when I did the single prepositional phrase, I did have a comma, but it was optional. That's a stylistic comma. You get to choose if you want the comma when you only have one prepositional phrase. Um, it could be for clarity or just because you're like, I think I, think I like a comma here because it'll sound better because my reader will know to pause a little longer. When you have two or more prepositional phrases, this comma is required. So anytime you have connected prepositional phrases, you must have that comma. You might make a note of that. Then we have a sentence that has both simple and connected. So the class buildings, with their backs against the forest wall, formed a semicircle facing a small one-room church at the opposite end of the compound. So we have with their backs against the forest wall at the opposite end of the compound. So now that I'm looking at this, we're actually going to take the simple, cross out the simple there, because technically this is two connected ones. Um, notice the class buildings with their backs against the forest wall. There are commas on both sides of this. Okay? That's because these prepositional phrases are describing the class buildings, but they don't really fit there. You can't just stick them in there and have that sentence work. You have to have the commas there to separate them. Here at the end, though, with these prepositional phrases ending the sentence, you don't need any commas. So note that when you kind of tuck a prepositional phrase in the middle, a lot of the time it needs two commas. Okay? And then we have the multiple. So this is kind of what we were talking about. A lot of the time it'll be actually, remember this crazy word, anaphora, Ooh, up the side, there we go, anaphora. So that repetition at the beginning of a, a word or uh, of a phrase or clause, excuse me. So here you have to his home, to his comfort, to the bringing up of their children, that should be an O, to the garden and her greenhouse, to the local church, and to her patchwork quilts. Yay, anaphora. It's great. So, to his home is your object, to his comfort is the object here, to the bringing up of their children. And this technically has two, so to the bringing up of their children, right? To the garden and her greenhouse. To actually it has objects both in the garden and her greenhouse, so it has two objects here. To the local church and to her patchwork quilts. So this sounds really nice because it's an anaphora, but you can also do it when it's not an anaphora. So take a look. Janet and Tiger went racing back over the country and over the town, over houses and churches, and mountains and rivers. That's a really long one, two, three, four objects. Across the park, and along the street, and in Janet's window. They raced a lot of places, didn't they? So really the goal of today, this was just review. You know prepositions, you know prepositional phrases, right? We're just going over what they look like and where the commas go. So for instance, if you have a single preposition, you get to choose if it's at the beginning of the sentence. When you have connected ones, if you have two or more, you have to have a comma, right? When you have multiples, you're dividing them up with commas because they're almost like a list. But the real goal of today is for you to create your own. So what you'll get, it'll look like this. That moment, dash, dash, was the best I ever had ever had. So this can technically stand alone, right? I could capitalize my T and put a period at the end and get rid of these weird dashes, and it would be a sentence. It's not what I'm going to do, though. Instead, I'm going to take each of those dashes 
and I'm going to add. So you'll notice, for each dash, I add a prepositional phrase. That moment of pure delight after opening presents was the best I ha ever had. Go ahead and write that one down. Make sure as you're going, you're doing the circling and the arrow drawing and the underlining. I don't do that for me. I do that for you. Yours will look like So number one, you have two slashes. She was glad to be in the quiet hospital room. So that means you have to start with two prepositional phrases. Jonas slash search the auditorium for a glimpse of his father. Making sure that you're using the proper punctuation, right? So you'll be adding one prepositional phrase here. The students ran to the locker room slash. So here I'll be ending a sentence with, prep, with a prepositional phrase, okay? Good luck. I know you will do great. This is does need to be turned in. It will be a grade, all right? Ask questions if you have them.